Welcome to Author Audience, where I'm on a mission to help you reach more people with your message. It's time to let your light shine. Today, I'm rolling out the red carpet and inviting you into my community for a behind the scenes look at what's working for authors just like you. My name is Shelly Hitz. I'm the owner of Author Audience Academy, and one of the most rewarding parts of my job is helping others get results and reach their goals. But in this episode, it's going to be kind of different. I have one of my members, Angela Meyer, and her three daughters with me to talk about their daughter's new book. So hi, guys. Hi. hi. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Emma Meyer. I'm Ava Meyer. And I'm Alina Meyer. And I'm their mom, Angela Meyer. Awesome. And so I just wanted to tell everyone a little bit about you from your official bio, and then we'll talk about just how you guys got started. And like, this is, this is their book, Become Agents of Creative. We're going to talk about your book and how you've already published a book at such a young age. So inspiring. They are a group called Fireflies Aglow a young author and artist collaboration. And they've been creating together for almost four years. They published their first collaborative book, Becoming Agents of Creativity. And they each designed a character, wrote a chapter, and then Emma took the sketches and illustrated the book. So they share their art and their writings on their website and in their monthly newsletter. You can find out about them at fireflyesaglow.com. Emma, do you want to share with us a little bit about how this group started and like what, you know, how this book even got started? Like you have a couple other people that you work with as well. Yes. It first started in 2013, a year after my mom, um, my parents created an artist collaborative. And oh, Alina and I decided that we wanted to have an artist collaborative as well. Cool. <laughs> and so we came together and we decided on a name. And a year later, our friend Aiden decided to come and join us in it, in it as well. And we started creating comics and stuff and cool. posting our artwork on, on a website my mom created in Squarespace. And then soon after this, Elijah and Zoe Olson came to join us and help us create comics. Well, at the same time, Zoe was creating her first book, Harry and Larry, A Tale of Two Canaries. Oh, fun. And um, She was 10 at the time, Zoe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was 10 when she published that book? Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. And how old are you three? I am I'm currently 14. We're both 11. We're twins. Okay, awesome. Journal. <laughs> yeah. We don't look alike. Yeah. We look like sisters. But yeah. yeah. Were you 11 when the book was published? Yes. Okay, so it's, it's been pretty recent, yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, um, so, and Emma, you were talking about... <laughs> how how um, Zoe was 10 when she published the book, and after she published it, she decided to put it in the Ankeny Authors Fair. Every April, there's an Ankeny Authors Fair for authors of, of Ankeny and all around Iowa that can come and share their books. And awesome. Zoe put Harry and Larry, Tale of Two Canaries there, and... We came to visit her because we're her friends, support. Yeah. You know, yes. um, but um, when we saw that, we decided, hey, we want to write a book too. So we decided, awesome. so we each created an alias to ourselves. I created Lucy, Ava created Dasher the Hawk, Elena created Susan the Owl, Elijah Olson created Captain Blue, and Zoe created Sugar the Cat. And from these five characters, we decided that we wanted to write, make a comic. It At first, it comic. started out as a comic, but then oh, we decided fun. to make it into a book because the comic was going to take a lot longer than <laughs> thought. Yeah, <laughs> without yeah. illustrating and everything. Yeah. Yes. So we. So are are these um, all like your characters? Yes. yes. On the there front is cover. more characters in the book, though. Tell her about how the how you guys decided to unite all your characters and have them come together. Yes. Um, so the center character you can see here, he's a griffin, and his name is Superlove. And this book is sort of an allegory. Yeah. And so Superlove is our Jesus character. Now, awesome. each of our characters that we created has superpowers, but we wanted to be able to share how they got their superpowers. So we decided to add this Jesus character in 
and drawing a little bit from Narnia, a little bit from the Lion King, we decided to make him <laughs> a lion. <laughs> yeah. And also we, a little bit of inspiration came from the song Super Love by Anthony Skinner. And in it, it says he flies through the heavens and breaks down the walls when you pray. So from that, we were oh. able to deduce that Super Love, our, our Jesus character, not, not only was named Super Love, but also has wings and could fly. Yeah, so was I was like, I just realized they have wings. And his yes. Wings. That's yes. so fun. Each of our characters comes, joins the story and meets Super Love. And each, from Super Love, they are able to receive their powers and they're all best friends. So just like you are in real life. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so, so they, go, they go on adventures and help to stop evil and make sure everything is according to what super love wants. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. There's so much goodness in what you just shared. And first of all, just the fact of Angela, you and Adrian, your husband and Catherine doing a collaborative art. So share just a little bit about what you do with that, that then inspired them to do it at collaborative artist group. Okay. Well, I've been painting for a number of years and Adrian always, we've been married a long time. He knew me all through art school. And so he was always the one who could look at a painting with me and tell me what it needed oh. to finish the piece. So he was my best critic. Yeah. And, and you could um, receive it from him. I could re not only receive it, but he didn't only see what was not right, but he saw how to fix it. Wow. And I didn't really make that connection until at a certain point he was explaining something that I couldn't see. And I said, well, can you actually just do it? <laughs> and he came in and I was like, okay, wow, he's, what he brought to it was so special. Yeah. And, um, and then um, another one of our friends, she came over and I had asked her to paint with me on a project. And when we started painting together, she just brought a completely different perspective. And so the three of us started painting together and we thought we'd do one painting together and that was really fun. Then we thought we'll do another painting. Then we decided we'd do a series of eight paintings together. And we thought that's a lot of paintings. So, yeah. but when we finished those eight paintings, we didn't want to stop. And awesome. that's when we decided to become an artist collective. Yeah. And so uh, girls, after you've done your first collaborative project, do you feel like you don't want to stop? Do you feel like no, you want to no. I want to write another book. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we, we have all agreed that we want to write another book and maybe even more in the future. <laughs> yeah. We want to keep going. Yeah. Awesome. And you were inspired as well, not only from the artist collaborative of your parents, but from your friend that had published a book. And now you are able to inspire other kids. <laughs> so it's like a ripple effect, yes. you know, how you're able to inspire and help other people. And so talk about a little bit of like, okay, now that you've published this book and you've done this and you have something like this, like what are some of your goals for going forward? Go ahead, Ava. Some of my goals, it, one of my goals is that I, when I'm doing English class, learning new vocab, vocabulary words, when I'm writing, I will use some of those new vocabulary words that I have learned and put them in my writing. Awesome. Yeah, That's, she really wants to grow in using English language, right? To describe yes. your stories. Because that doesn't come naturally to you, does it? No, it doesn't. I usually, I have a visual brain so when I'm I usually just think it and then it's really hard for me to put it into words and so I'm trying to get a habit of writing very well and knowing what to do when I visual the um, image in my head yeah and we were talking even before the podcast you said like you dream about it like, yes like I sometimes it. do so sometimes like you're just very right brain visual and just all those images. And so you're having to practice a little bit more of the left brain of just writing it and describing it. And so I think a lot of people probably can relate to that, that are creatives, mm -hmm. that they can picture it sometimes, but it's hard to put it into words. So that's going to really build that muscle for you. And that's awesome. Yes, that's, it's making me really excited so I can write more books with more talent into it. Like, yeah things that is actually in I am visually in my brain you're visualizing yes. yeah so you're, yeah. you it's almost like you have a movie in your brain like yes you can you can see the the whole scene play out yeah and All then you just have to figure out how to put it in, and write it into words so other people can see that same thing in their minds 
Yes. It really helped me to understand when, when you were trying to put your chapter into words, I, I didn't know this about her. Oh, um, awesome. So you learned said, something. Yeah, because she said, Mom, I'm stuck. I don't know how to put this into words. And so I thought, um, well, maybe she just doesn't know what to write about. So we started brainstorming. And then she said, oh, no. And she started describing everything that was happening in the room, like every single detail. Wow. And described the sound effects that were happening. I mean, literally like a movie. <laughs> And I went, okay, well, let's look at what the <laughs> overall theme is here. And so well, we, once we talked through that and I took notes, we, we talked through it and she was able to put it into a story. Yes. It was really helpful when Mama was there because she really helped me out and told me what I could do. And I told her <laughs> yes or no. Yeah. And so even just doing this project and Angela, you being involved, it really just even helped grow your relationship. A lot. A lot. Yes. It's, it's been really great quality time. Yeah. And a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you could be playing video games or doing other things, but you know, it's like, this is like, you're creating something from your imagination and then you're able to share that with other kids. That's so fun. Mm. How about you other girls? Do you have goals now that you've published a book? Yes, I have a goal of publishing another um, self-authored and illustrated oh, book. Oh, awesome. Um, my goal is by the next Ankeny Authors Fair to have it published or in the process of being published. My main idea right now, I'm doing a story about a wolf. I'm not quite sure how it's going to play out yet, so I can't really give much detail, yeah. but... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's exciting. And that's how most people write stories. They don't know the whole thing. I mean, it's just like it kind of, they know a little bit of like what they, you know, basically want to do, but it kind of unfolds as you write, but that's part of the fun, right? Like, it's just like, it's an unfolding as you write it. So you're going to also do your own illustrations for that book too. Yes. Yes. I've actually already started. I found that I, I'm a bit, I'm a mixture of having it in my mind as well yeah. as having the some words that I want to tell, mm -hmm. but sometimes they can clash what's in my mind and what I want to write sometimes. Yeah. So sometimes I illustrate before I write and sometimes I write before I illustrate. It really just depends on what I'm doing. Oh, interesting. So now when you did your illustrations, like you were the one that took the sketches and did the actual illustrations in the books, the yes. books. Did you, do yeah, sorry. did you do these digitally? Um, yes, I use this app called Procreate on my iPad. I love and Procreate. <laughs> it, it's the best. We all love Procreate. Yes. yes. Thank you for brushes. <laughs> I took the original ideas that everyone had for what they wanted as pictures in their stories, and then I, like, Elijah Olson has a very specific stick figure. Like, he wrote the stick stick family book and he, he's all about stick figures so I oh. so I for him I had to take what he had already drawn and basically just draw over it and make it cleaner but for other people like Elena our art has increased so much over these improved, past yes yeah. it's, it's improved so much over these past four years that she didn't like any of the illustrations <laughs> she'd made so she wanted me to take what she so I took what she originally intended Okay. And I read what, where it would be in the book. And I sort of drew from what was already in the book and what was already in, in the illustration to make the different illustrations within the book. Yeah. yeah. And so, you, you know, um, Eva and Elena, you were like seven, four years ago, right? Yes. When this first starts. So you probably have grown a lot. Well, you too, Emma. I mean, I mean, you yeah. all are probably growing a lot in your artistic skills, your writing skills. That is so neat. I love, for those of you that are watching that might not know, Procreate is an amazing app for your iPad. You can use it with the Apple Pencil or other styluses and you can create, like I use it for lettering, but you can use all, yeah. all sorts of illustrating. It's amazing. And so that's so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like game changer, so amazing. So um, what about you, Alina? What are your goals? Well, my goal is to, it's basically her same goal, is to write a chapter book by the next book fair and also to make larger chapters because sometimes I just like do four page chapters. <laughs> and, 
The way I'm going to do that, like another goal I have is for every weekday, I'm going to try to write at least 200 words. Wow. So. That's great. And do you think you will ever do another collaborative book or a collaborative project again? Well, I was thinking we might do that in the future, yes. but we haven't fully um, planned that out. Well, you're already collaborating on one with Zoe. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're not quite sure how it's going to work out, but we're planning on bringing together some of Zoe's book characters along with some of the Becoming Agents of Creativity book characters. Oh. One book we're planning. Cool. Maybe. And then that will encourage people to read both of the other books too, to yes. hear more about those same characters. Yes. So girls, what would you say to kids who have an interest maybe in writing or even illustrating and publishing a book, but they're just not sure what to do or they feel nervous or scared? Do you have any advice for kids on that? I would say that it doesn't matter how old you are, that it doesn't matter if you can only draw stick figures. <laughs> right. There's like, a stick figure book your friend drew. Yes. Yeah. Right. And it um, came from that idea. Yeah. Yes. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. Awesome. Um, yeah. Yes. And with yeah. whatever talent that you have right now, with whatever ability, and it's going to continue to grow and get better, but you can use what you have right now and still encourage other people, inspire other people, create fun stories, you yeah. know, that's awesome. And Angela, what would you say to parents like who they're, they're, they know their children are creative or want to explore their creativity? Like what would you recommend for parents um, to do like in that process? Um, just to, to keep it simple and celebrate every step. Uh, um, I think I really didn't know how to help them publish their books or really start writing when I started, but I just started opening up my eyes and ears and asking questions to, so that's how I started talking to Zoe and Elijah's mom. Oh. I said, okay, the girls want to write a book and Zoe's yeah. written a book. And so she said, well, why don't we start getting the kids together? And she said, because Zoe wants to do more art oh. and you're good at art. And so we started getting the kids together and we started pulling from each other's strengths. Okay. So I think that my advice to parents is find out what your kid could do now and celebrate that. I remember with Elijah, he said, well, I can only draw stick figures. Yeah. I said, well, great. <laughs> then tell stories with stick figures. And then yeah. as you're developing that, you know, your story making skills, you, you'll develop your drawing skills as well. Yeah. And so um, just start where you're at and celebrate it. I love that. And just, you know, you, you don't have to have, you don't have to be like a, a certain type of artist. You don't have to have a certain type of skill or have taken these certain classes or anyone can do this, right? Oh, right. for sure. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of their first books are computer paper and we just put lines at the top and they'd write their story up top and draw the picture mm -hmm. below and we'd use a stapler and we'd staple it together and we'd send those to grandparents for Christmas and those are some of their, yeah, best books, really. <laughs> it was yeah. really fun doing yes. it because you could use your imagination. And if you had <laughs> wrong edits, they, they, your grandparents would understand. And they'd, <laughs> yeah. uh, they'd love it either way. Right. <laughs> yes. And I love that, too. That's a really practical step for parents of just even encouraging just those handmade yes. books. I found one last summer in all of my, my stuff that I made. I don't even know what grade I was in, but I illustrated yeah. it and I had a story and I was like, oh, this was probably my first book. I want to see it. <laughs> I know. I wish I would have thought to bring it, but, but yeah, those things are just things that you'll always, you know, remember. And it's so fun. And I love that. Now I could talk to girls forever because you're just so <laughs> inspiring. I <laughs> Thank <love> you. you. <laughs> I love what you're doing. But um, as we kind of come to a close, do you have any like take action tips for our listeners based on this podcast and what you've shared? Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you okay. say that, Emma? I would say read a book. Um, when you read books, uh, for me, it's helped me tremendously to help increase my vocabulary mm -hmm. and the usage of words in sentences. It's just helped my writing grow exponentially. Like, it's yeah. true. So for young people and adults, that is a great, great tip. That is, I mean, when, the more you read, the more you are going to grow your skills as a writer. So I love that tip, Emma. Thank you. Do you have one, Ava? 
I was just gonna say, if you had a book, if you wanted to read a book, you could read this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and where can they find that book? They can find it on the website that you were talking about in the beginning, um, fireflesaglow.com in the... There's a book page. A book page. And it has a link to Amazon. So it's yes. on, the book is available on Amazon, but you can also find it on our website, um, fireflesaglow.com. It's which, right on there. Which also has all of our other books too. Cool. If you want to get this. Yeah. Yes. And it will probably have like a way to connect with you, like an email list. So they know when you yes. publish new books. Yes. And, and also tell them what you're going to do in the so newsletter. I'm planning on creating a fourth through eighth grade reading list for people to like some of my favorites that I, I that I've loved growing up. Yeah. And I'm going to share them. Yeah, yeah and that's that's a great tip for, you know, a great thing to give to younger kids that, you know, like you said, your tip is to read more. And then there are some great recommendations that you have of books to read. So I love that. So yeah, definitely go over to Fireflies Aglow, right? Firefliesaglow.com. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to be inspired by these girls and their friends and know about when they release more books, definitely sign up. And if you have kids that could really benefit from just seeing other kids, you know, doing this, you know, take them to the site, show them, have them watch this interview with you, have them sign up for the email. That would be so much fun. Mm. Did you girls have anything else that you wanted to share as we close? I want to say it was really fun talking to you. It's true. Yes. Thank yep. you. Thank you so yes. much. I just have so much joy just seeing you all there and all that you've accomplished at such a young age. And I just want to encourage you to keep writing and keep creating, developing those creative gifts, you know, and, and just seeing what God does with them. Cause that's so exciting. And anyone who's watching, I'd like you to know, you don't have to be afraid to be creative. Yes. It's true. It's true. You can't mess it up, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Even if you make a scribble, you can put that into a drawing. It's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. We, yeah. A lot of how we started drawing was we would make a scribble for each <laughs> other and we would turn it into something beautiful. And just because you didn't draw, if like if, when it comes to drawing and you didn't draw what you thought you wanted to draw, you can still make it into something amazing. Yes. yes. Yeah, that was a good thing when we were starting out that uh, Lena would be frustrated because she couldn't draw what she'd imagined. Oh, yeah. And so we've just decided that let's use what you've imagined as a starting point mm. and, and not say that the end product has to look like what you imagined yet because we're building skills and we're growing. Yeah. I love that tip because um, even as an artist myself, sometimes I can't <laughs> get what's in my mind yeah. exactly on the paper, but to give yourself freedom and say, it's okay. That's a starting point. I will do what I can and I'll add yeah. to that. And I loved your thought of like, just Ava, of just doing a scribble and then just saying, okay, what can we create with that scribble? You know, that's a fun, creative activity parents can do with their kids. Kids can do, I mean, you can fill sketchbooks full of different Definitely. Yes. Definitely. And then they become illustrations or pictures. So those are all really, really fun things. I can't wait to see what's next for you all. And thank you so much for being on the podcast. Is that thank a pleasure. You. Thank you for inviting us. You're welcome. And for all of you listening, I hope that you are just so inspired right now. These three girls and their friends, they've, they've published a book. You know, if they can do it, you can do it. <laughs> and so I hope you feel inspired, encouraged. And if you're a young person, I hope that you start writing and you start creating and you start taking, um, you know, just your scribbles and, and your things, your imaginations and start putting them to paper because you never know what could become of that. So um, thank you so much for joining us and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Author Audience. I would like to invite you to attend one of my free trainings on three proven book writing formulas every nonfiction author needs to know. This is a fun and fast way to write a nonfiction book, but also a book that you're proud of. Plus, I will give you two free gifts just for attending, no credit card required. First, you'll get my 10 nonfiction book title templates, and you'll also get my ebook titled Brilliant Brainstorming. It's a 28 page ebook, and both of these bonuses are yours at no charge just for joining us for the training. You can sign up for my free training by going to shellyhits.com forward slash formulas. 
This training and the two bonuses are free, and I would love to help you write your next nonfiction book. Thank you.